Hey everybody, how's it going? Let's talk about your home recording studio. Today, we're gonna talk about ribbon microphones and specifically ribbon microphones with phantom power. I've heard several times recently of you know, different sources around the internet um, just warning against the dangers of ever sending phantom power to a ribbon microphone. And you know, this really kind of got me thinking like, um, oh my goodness, I, I've got a couple of ribbon microphones. Like, would I be okay if I ever accidentally sent phantom power to them or anything? And so that got me to kind of reading into it a little bit and you know, come to find out with the vast majority of modern ribbon microphones, if not all modern ribbon microphones, uh, it's fine. There, there's no danger of sending phantom power to a modern ribbon microphone. Now I say, I keep saying modern, that's opposed to vintage ribbon microphones, which a long time ago, as the designs were evolving and everything, um, there were some designs that could actually be harmed by uh, sending phantom power to them. But those microphones are not in production anymore. They haven't been for decades. So I figured as just kind of part of the conversation, I would set up a couple of microphones here and here. Let's take a look at what I got here. First, I have a condenser microphone. This is an AKG C414, and it's a condenser microphone. And as most of you probably know, condenser microphones do require phantom power in order to operate. And then I've got a Cascade Fathead here, and this is a passive ribbon mic. It, it, passive meaning it does not require any sort of phantom power in order to function. Now I have both of these plugged in via XLR cable you know, through this whole spiral cable mess over here. And I've got them going into inputs one and two of a Motu M4 interface here. Now, right now I have phantom power turned on on channel one, and that's where the condenser microphone is plugged into. And if I turn up the volume a little bit and kind of speak into this guy here, let me put my ears on, we can hear like, okay, yeah, that's picking up signal. Sounds fine. Kind of turn it up a little bit more. And if we turn off phantom power, uh, honestly, we're going to get some pretty nasty noises here, but let's, uh, let, let's experience that real quick. Yeah. So we got, so we got kind of like a, ooh, oh, a couple more, you know, a couple of pretty nasty bumps and everything there. But, but um, if I try to talk through it now, you know, nothing comes through. So needs phantom power in order to operate. Okay, now uh, let's take a listen to the uh, ribbon mic here. So I'm gonna turn up the gain on this guy, get him up to a sufficient volume and yeah, there you go, okay. And I have no phantom power turned on on this channel at all. Um, and the mic is still picking up a signal fine, but let's do the forbidden thing here. Let's actually hit the, uh, 48 volt, uh, button here and see what happens. Oh, okay. A couple more nasty pops, but that's it. The microphone microphone still functions, right? We didn't just ruin this, um, you know, this kind of moderately priced uh, ribbon microphone by sending phantom power to it. Um, we got a couple of nasty, you know, bumps and, and pops in the um, signal, but the microphone still functions. It's still picking up my voice. It still works just fine. So I just wanted to illustrate that in, in almost all situations, especially in a home studio, simply just sending phantom power over an XLR cable straight to a ribbon microphone, it, it, it's no problem. You, you don't have to stress out over it. So on this interface, it actually has independent 48 volt for channel one and channel two. Uh, for most interfaces, uh, at least most interfaces that I've seen, um, you don't have that option. It's either all or nothing. You, you, there's one phantom power switch and it applies to all the, the microphone inputs. And I just wanted to kind of illustrate that that's okay. Same thing with dynamic microphones. Dynamic microphones are not gonna be harmed by phantom power. You can send phantom power to them. So if your interface is an all or nothing uh, 48 volt phantom power supply and you got one condenser and um, you know one dynamic or one ribbon mic plugged in, um, you know, it, it's really not gonna be a problem. But, <laughs> and there's always a but, isn't there? There are uh, situations where phantom power to any microphone can be um, dangerous. And let's at least go over a few of these. I, 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 uh, if you know of any that I've missed, let us know down in the comments. But these are the situations, the scenarios that I can think of where phantom power can be bad and can actually harm microphones. 
The first one that comes to mind is if you have a, a TRS patch bay and you're patching from a preamp, uh, you know, XLR out of a preamp, um, you're using like a converter, like a, a cable that's XLR to TRS and plugging into a TRS patch bay, and then you're patching into the front of that patch bay uh, to another a TRS to XLR cable to your microphone. Um, as soon as it's plugged in, I, I mean, you know, don't do that. Just, just don't do that. Don't adapt from XLR to TRS, TRS back to XLR, and then send phantom power over it. Once it's all plugged in, it's fine, mm, fine. But that's a very dangerous setup because if you ever forget and leave phantom power active, while you are plugging and unplugging um, your TRS cable from that patch bay, momentarily, you know, the, the tip or the ring or the sleeve of that TRS cable is going to make contact and essentially it's gonna send phantom power down the wrong pin uh, to your XLR. And that can be dangerous. That can send a, um, a voltage that's unexpected to a pin that it doesn't belong on and um, essentially, you know, whether it's a ribbon or, or whatever, it can hurt a microphone. So don't do that. You know, just don't adapt from XLR to TRS and TRS back to XLR through a patch bay in the first place. Bad idea. Even sending phantom power through a patch bay in the first place is kind of a bad idea. I actually do that, but it's through an XLR patch bay that I'm just using essentially as a cable coupler. But at least the pin mappings of XLR to XLR, the pins map together, and so at least the uh, phantom power is going down where it expects. Another scenario that can be dangerous is basically a cable that's wired incorrectly. Um, most of the time this isn't really a concern if you're buying kind of quality cable. Uh, it, it, the chances of getting a cable that are that, that's not wired correctly is very slim. Uh, if either you're buying inexpensive cables from a you know kind of a shady source, or if you're making your own cables, or if you're modifying or repairing your own cables, there's always that chance that like whoops, I accidentally soldered the you know this lead to that pin, and, and things get mixed up and. Yeah, that again, that can send phantom power where it doesn't belong and that can damage a microphone. And the other one that comes to mind, and, and this just came from, from reading around about like, like where did this whole thing about, you know, never send phantom to a, a ribbon microphone, where did this come from in the first place? And yeah, it is from those old, um, old style um, ribbon microphones. But those older designs had a slightly different configuration to where um, it, it just basically how they were grounded. And um, yeah, if phantom power was sent to that, it would uh, you know then go to ground. There would be a big differential in voltage inside the microphone, and and that could do some some bad damage. So I think really like the the, the you know lesson here is that for the for the most part you're fine. But really, if, if you're unsure at all about the design of your microphone, about you know how it's going to handle phantom power, really, really contact the manufacturer. Either go to their website, and it's probably listed there. That I did that for this Cascade Fathead, uh, right on their website under the product description and tech specs and everything. They specifically mentioned, yeah, it's phantom power safe. It's fine. If your manufacturer doesn't say that explicitly on their website, then uh, you know call them, uh, send them an email. In my experience. Uh, microphone manufacturers have been very responsive. Their customer service has been great. And so, yeah, send them an email, um, look up their phone number, give them a call, and, and just ask them directly about your specific model. If you're unsure at all, if, you, if, you're, if you're just wavering about actually touching that button and actually sending 48 volts to your, to your ribbon microphone, even if you're fairly certain that it's designed as phantom power safe, eh, if you're unsure at all, just ask the manufacturer. And I think, like, probably a good rule of thumb, you know, just because, is to just leave phantom power off when you don't need it. Um, just to at least remove any of these variables, just in case you are in one of these, you know, very narrow circumstances where it could actually cause harm. Eh, what's the, the big deal? Why not just leave phantom power off until you've got everything plugged in and then turn it on? Uh, as you can, as you heard here, you know, you might still get some pops and, and clicks and everything as it's uh, kind of warming up. A lot of interfaces, which I'm actually kind of surprised this one does not, but a lot of interfaces are, 
uh, how do I put it? They apply phantom power gently. They, they essentially ramp up the voltage rather than just all of a sudden slamming the microphone with a full 48 volts at, you know, whatever the current is, just all of a sudden as soon as you hit the button. Um, like that FMR RNP uh, external preamp that I've got, that's one of the, that's a great feature. It mutes uh, any output and then it just kind of slowly ramps up the 48 volts and then once it's there, it unmutes the output and you're fine. And you can probably tell by how much louder those pops were than just the sound of my voice through the microphone that, uh, you know, that those come through very strong sometimes, depending on your interface, your cable, your mic, all that stuff. Probably a good idea to turn down any gain. Um, maybe probably turn down your speaker volume as well uh, when you apply phantom power just to kind of prevent uh, such a loud thing from happening that you're not expecting. It'll either scare the pants off of you if you're not expecting it, um, or if you got your speakers cranked up and you're live monitoring through the microphone for whatever reason, you know, you forgot to turn off your direct monitor or something. Um, maybe you were working on a mix and, you know, mixes are pretty quiet at first, you know, and, and until late in the process when we start kind of cranking up the volume a little bit, but you know, maybe you've got your speakers turned way up because you're working on a quiet mix and then you go and hit the phantom power button and then just this pop happens. I mean, not only could it scare the pants off of you, but if it's loud enough, you know, it could damage your speakers or something like that. Well, hopefully uh, this has been at least a little bit helpful here. Um, I figured with just kind of a short, quick demonstration, we could at least illustrate that, you know, you're probably fine. If you're unsure that you're fine, uh, just check with your manufacturer and follow a couple of safe practices like don't use wacky cables, uh, keep your volumes, you know, your gains and volumes at quieter levels until you're sure of what your input signal strength is going to be and everything. And uh, don't patch through a TRS patch bay if you're going from XLR to TRS, TRS, XLR, and then sending phantom power through it. Bad idea. Just bad idea. <laughs> All right. Hey, well, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, that'll do it for me this time, and I'll see you guys again next time.